Hello. Today I'm going to talk about a film that is 20 years old, and that is Napoleon Dynamite. Um, I even have the shirt, Vote for Pedro. Obviously, you know, his good friend Pedro ran for class president. Um, if you haven't seen this film, <clears throat> it's pretty good, of course. Um, you know, I was 10 when this came out, so, you know, I, I, uh, there was a good chunk of my life where I really watched this a lot, um, and this is just hilarious, um, this is just one of those movies where it's so <clears throat> it's different you know the humor <clears throat> it, like it's funny though perhaps the way to describe it I don't know how well I could um, to some extent it's sort of like um, adult swim humor to Again, to an extent, um, but not exactly. It's just, it's interesting. Um, this film stars John Heater, <clears throat> and I believe this was the first film he ever did in his life, and he really embraced being Napoleon Dynamite. Also, as uh, John uh, Gruss as uh, Uncle Rico, who <laughs> you know he's a jerk. <laughs> Um, comes in and just, you know, you know, he just, you know, he and his brother, and Napoleon's brother Kip, uh, played by Aaron Rule, they're going to, uh, sell things, like first it's Tupperware, and one of the people that Uncle Rico is going to sell Tupperware to is a, is the mother of a girl that Napoleon goes to ask out for. Or the dance, the school dance that's in the film, and uh, uh, they go, and um, his friend uh, Pedro, played by their friend Ramirez, and uh, Deb are at the dance, uh, played by Tina Majorino, Met, uh, Majorino, yeah, and either, either way, Napoleon's date believes to be with her friends because she's a very you know she's a popular girl and well Napoleon is awkward <laughs> to say the least and um yeah he, it's just it's it's an interesting film where uh, you know it's like everyday life to some extent it's, um it's set in 2004 um, even though a lot of the things people wear, like pr primarily the wearing main characters, the wearing stuff that seems to be more fitted for like 70s and 80s and in Napoleon's home, there's a computer from like the 90s and a VCR that pff, you push open, it goes like, pff, to put the tape in and then close it like that. It, it, it's interesting. It's like, it's this top odd time capsule where time keeps moving forward but there's a good chunk of people who are stuck in a certain time period though uncle rico is really living in the past because you know he was like the star football player and then his life peaked in like 82 and then it hasn't he's not gone forward um Another thing that uh, Uncle Rico goes to sell is uh, herbal enhancements for women. And uh, for a while, Deb doesn't like Napoleon because Uncle Rico said, well, Napoleon wants, he said that you'd be interested in this. Um, and uh, also, uh, Kip has a girlfriend that he met online, and um, her name is LaFonda. 
And, uh, yeah, I guess, spoiler, at the end of the film, there's an after credit scene where uh, the two get married. There is an after credit scene. Um, this film, uh, you know, is a pretty clean movie. There's not a lot of, prof there's really no real major profanities to speak of. Except maybe if, like, for, like, a, maybe like some songs or something, really, but. For the most part, it's pretty clean. Um, it's rated PG. <clears throat> it's 90 minutes, 95 minutes. Interesting. <laughs> like on the Blu-ray, it says 90 minutes. On the DVD, it says 95. So it's interesting. But I believe it was, yeah, like 95 minutes for the Blu-ray. So that's clearly a typo. Um Um, and, uh, you know, Pedro's running for president and, you know, he's, you know, he's a new kid and Napoleon and them become friends because he shows him to his locker and, uh, yeah, uh, Pedro tries to ask out Summer, played by Haley Duff, who, is running for class president, who, which obviously then Pedro runs for, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's 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 an interesting film and in how things just kind of go together and uh, just seeing the life of Napoleon Dynamite and the people he encounters, and now he's also bullied at school. He gets put in a headlock and smacked around in like lockers and everything, and then shoved into lockers. At which point, afterwards. He then goes to try to, like, you know, kick him, but he's really up in the air. Uh, it's just funny. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there's a character, Rex. Rex, played by Diedrich Bader, who played Lawrence in uh, uh, Office Space, uh, the neighbor of, uh, of Peter, the main character. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's in here. He's uh, Rex Quando. Gonna teach you how to defend yourself and uh, to have some self respect. And uh, Kip wants to do that for to you know, uh, to you know, get good confidence and everything. Uh, it's also the first time he sees Rex's commercials. The first time like around where you see Deb, she's offering to. Uh, Get a picture. Have uh, she's trying to have her own business of taking pictures of people, to uh, for college. So she's offering Napoleon like, you know, you want to look like this? It's a picture of a uh, of a lady. He goes like, this is a girl. And how uh, they're talking and how he wants to buy some lanyards. Like, I already made a fit of those at band camp or a or a summer camp. I don't know why band camp. That just kind of came up. <clears throat> and my horse is my voice is a little hoarse now. Now that yeah, my horse I don't I don't have a horse, but it's kind of a little horse. I just sound like Rex. Oh. Maybe I should stop that. But uh, yeah. um, yeah, this is just a funny film, and there's a, uh, there's a point where because of how fed up Napoleon is with his uncle about, like, people think Napoleon's an idiot because he gave Summer and Trisha, the, her friend that Napoleon went to the dance with, but then she abandoned to go hang out with Summer and her boyfriend Don. So then, at the dance, Napoleon and Deb dance for a bit. Um, and he gives her some, gives them the Herbal enhancers, uh, <clears throat> uh, f flyers that they post on, uh, put on, uh, Napoleon's locker. And, uh, he throws a grapefruit at his va uh, uncle's van, which then he goes and tries to chase him down. And then he just, <laughs> Napoleon just elbows him into, in the 
like the chest and then he lets go and then he goes gets over onto the fence and then he falls and then he runs away I don't know a lot of this stuff if you've seen it but a lot of that's out of order but uh, it, it's just funny it's just uh, things just happen in a way and also the grandma that you know uh, Napoleon and Kip live with uh, she goes out to the dune, sand dunes with her uh, boyfriend that they apparently didn't know about, or at least Napoleon doesn't. I don't think Kip would either, but, you know, uh, <clears throat> he's uh, just, you know, you know, she's riding on a, like a four-wheeler then goes over to the dunes and boom, she goes into the hospital and that's when Uncle Rico call, gets called and you see f frequently throughout the movie, he's throwing a football near the camera like, you know, you still got it. He, you know, would have gone to state if the coach put him in, you know, and that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that one, like, you know, quarter, if, they, if he was in the, at the, that game, you know, they would have gone to state. Uh, but, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, Napoleon's an awkward guy, but he seems to be nice, overall generally nice, even though sometimes his comments kind of seem to be very, like, <laughs> kind of like, okay, well, that's, that's a way to start a conversation, like, for Deb, <laughs> when he goes to talk to her, you know, primarily about the stuff that she left on his porch, she ran away, because she says, you know, is anyone else home? I'm trying to save, save money to go to college. Or earn money to go to college. Like, it kids goes, your mom goes to college. She just runs away. Left all of her stuff there. And so he goes to... Get, so he goes to initiate the conversation of giving Deb her stuff back. But what... He enter, he goes up to her and he says, bye. And he sees her, she's drinking like 1% milk. He goes like, you're drinking 1% because you think you're fat? Because you're not. Could drink whole milk if you wanted. <clears throat> and it's like, stuff like that. It's like, I guess that's one way to start a conversation with somebody you don't really know well. Not the best way, but that's a way. And, well, yeah. Obviously, because of uh, his uncle uh, gave her that herbal enhancer flyer for breast uh, enhancement uh, she wasn't fond of him for a while and then uh, but yeah he gets a I guess another spoiler he gets beat up by Rex Quando because he goes to their home where Stella's at and uh, she's home and she's buff and everything too and you know he <clears throat> Gives her a flyer, like, you know, you could be like this, you see. And he has some hands, and he goes over towards her chest, and then just at that moment, Rex comes in, sees what's going on, and he goes, Come here, boy! And then he just, you just hear things just crashing and everything, and then uh, by the end of the film, you see him with a, like he had a broken arm and like a, like a black eye and everything, he just got beat up. And, uh, rightfully so. I mean, you know, uh, that was great. And, uh, things worked well for Napoleon and Pedro and Deb. And Grandma comes back, she's fine. And they also have a llama named Tina. Tina, a fat lark, come get some dinner. Yeah. If you've never seen this movie, there's just so much that goes on. It's just, uh, it's an entertaining film. I'll just say that. Uh, I know I spoil, I guess, you know, Kip and LaFonda getting married. It's kind of funny how, you know, uh, some of the members of LaFonda's family, they're like, like, why are you with this guy? Like, what? <laughs> like, Kip's such a nerdy like dweeb, like <clears throat> why? Uh, and she flies out from because um, the film is in Preston, Idaho, and like uh, yeah, Detroit, I believe. Yeah, so 
Anyway, yeah. Napoleon Dynamite. Very good film. Directed by Jared Hess. And written by Jared Hess and his wife, uh, Jerusha Hess. Um, also, some of the stuff that happens in this film or said uh, actually happened in real life. Jared Hess said that, uh, like, one of the things that happens in the early in the film, you know, Napoleon's bullied and he wants to go home. So he calls home. Kip answers. And he goes like, uh, can he come get me? No. Oh, my, my, little, my stomach hurts real bad. I can't. Hey. The grandma's, their grandma's out so there's no car really that they can really use and what whatnot but uh <clears throat> and so uh <laughs> one thing that actually happened in real life when uh, i believe it, yeah his brother called him at home similar conversation occurred you know, wants to go home he's like feel sick or whatever he's like i'm not gonna do that and goes like well could you go and you know, bring my chapstick. No, but my lips hurt real bad. And then man, that was basically it. But it keeps going further in the film where it goes like, my, herps, my lips hurt real bad. Let's just borrow some from the school nurse. I know she's got like tons in her throat. I'm not using hers, you sicko. See ya. God. Idiot. And then he hangs up the phone. Um, and another thing is, like, there's a, a farmer, or, like, you know, across the way, uh, named Lyle. And uh, he's gonna, you know, he need more steak. And so there's a cow there, and he's got a gun. Yeah, he's an older guy. He goes, hi, Lyle. And he aims the gun. And, he, and Napoleon has to go on a school bus which is full of elementary school kids and and the director said and this actually happened you know the guy there's a guy who's gonna you know for me he shoots and kills the cow but as he's doing this this school bus full of kids pulls up and stops right at the moment where it goes and all the kids see this and they're all screaming <laughs> that happens in the movie and that up uh, uh, happen in real life and apparently when the, so much of this kind of stuff happens maybe like little things here and there but enough of that stuff that happened in jared hess's actual life made it up or made it into the film i made it up because some of that stuff is like you know in a way it's kind of made up but some stuff like that that could, could happen and in many cases they did happen so when they showed this film and yeah, their family was there. Jared Hess's mom watched the film and she was just like, oh, well, that was embarrassing because so much stuff within the family and what they all kind of, some stuff have been through or has happened or that they experienced ended up in the movie. So, like, apparently it was a bit embarrassing. Um, but if you have not seen this, it is absolutely worth a watch. Um at least once and i know the humor is that's awkward and odd that might not be uh to your liking but i think it'll be at least worth watching a bit just or at least all the way to the end once just to see if there's something that you like understandable if you're not fond of this but i don't know I, you know i don't know i i kind of always saw this as a sort of a film of my generation even though i know generation x really liked this film obviously but as a millennial there's a lot of the stuff that's just like i don't know some things i recognized growing up in the 90s and in the 2000s that's just i remember seeing and like stuff like you know dial-up internet and you know they i don't know if they necessarily had dial-up though considering the decor and some of the things they have it wouldn't really shock me if they still had dial up, but I don't know. It, maybe I'm just trying to go too, <laughs> a little too much or something in there. But you know, old computers, old televisions, old you know, you know VCRs and all that stuff. I remember seeing some things of that nature <laughs> growing up uh, a bit. So 
I could kind of reminiscent about this sort of thing as well as just uh, love watching this every so often over the years. And now that it's 20 years old, I would like, I would love for this to have a 4K release. But because Disney owns it, because, you know, they bought Fox and it's from Fox Searchlight Pictures and Paramount, though, it's from Fox Home Entertainment and all that, so that means Disney has it, so, <clears throat> you know, they've got this, um, the rights to this film, and there is a 4K restoration that has been made and apparently has been shown for like a, like a 20th anniversary screening that I think has already happened, or it might not, or it might happen later, but yeah. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's funny. Uh, yeah, Kip says he's a, gonna be a cage fighter. And Napoleon's like, the worst reflexes of all time. And, yeah, it's just... Yeah, and Napoleon likes to draw. He draw a lighter. And this film is, like, you know... You know, Napoleon Dynamite, tw ten sweet years of lagger magic, tots, and great skills. Because, obviously, Napoleon has excellent skills. And, uh... Gosh! So there's the Blu-ray and the DVD. The DVD you can flip. Like some of the special features are on one side only. The rest are on the other side, but yeah. All the special features are on the Blu-ray disc, so that's good. Um, including the uh, short film Palooka, which is what really was sort of the genesis of sorts of this film. Um, though uh, the, the character was named Seth that he uh, John Heater played, and then there's two guys that were then just merged into one for Pedro. And, uh, yeah. One of the things also that happens at the beginning, there's a wrestler or action figure that Napoleon has on the string. He goes and opens up the back of the school bus window and he throws the action figure out and uh, has the like the line the string and he and some other kid watch it from the back as it's being towed and everything and it's just I don't know it's, it's interesting <laughs> to see, say the least um, but yeah that's uh what I have to say about Napoleon Dynamite, I enjoy it. I love watching this film. And it is definitely one that is, I think, worth going towards. But, yeah. And one thing about Disney, you know, they have it and there's a new 4K restoration and all. But, um, apparently, Disney is not uh, for stuff like this. Especially when it comes to, like, Fox, you know. Like if unless there was a restoration coming out for like a new 4K Blu-ray release, uh, since none was really done prior to the Disney acquisition, um, yeah, uh, Hulu seems to be the only place that one can watch this in 4K. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any chance that there will be a physical copy with the 4K transfer on a disc coming out at any point. Because uh, Disney's is sort of like, you know, 
unless they feel like there really is something worthwhile that people have wanted for a long time, like True Lies, um, and Aliens, and The Abyss, those 4K transfers that have been released, like last year, uh, those were sort of in the works already, and so they're out there now, and people love them. But so, a film like this that didn't have any sort such thing, either prior or has had a huge, big uh, fan demand, and this is a this is a cult film, this is you know a cult classic. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this film is going to have a 4K Blu-ray release. But the Blu-ray and DVD releases that we do have, um, they are good. So. There's that at least, and I'm glad to own this, uh, especially on Blu-ray. But if they did have a 4K version, I would absolutely look at seeing what all will be <clears throat> would be on it. You know, if all the extras here would go over, I would hope so. It would really suck if they didn't. As well as it would be cool if they had like a another thing like 20 years later, like. Uh, like a Q and A, or they just interview people individually about the film and uh, the impact that it's had over the years with for them and all. But yeah. You know. Anyway, that's all I have uh, to say right now. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a great weekend hope your week was great and uh what do you think of this film if you've seen it do you enjoy it do you dislike it why why not uh yeah please take care and have a great day bye